The attitude of coming from thanksgiving to trust, not thanksgiving the day, thanksgiving the attitude of our heart and our life, thanksgiving from thanksgiving to trust. How do we make that transition? What's the open door that God has given us through the attitude of thanksgiving? You know, we uh, teach our children about being thankful, don't we? We try different ways to do it. When they're little, you know, you're especially, you know, you give them something and they say, you know, say thank you, say thank you, say thank you. You know, like you just go crazy trying to make this happen in this little child's life. Phyllis watches children and and we had this little girl and, and so Phyllis, gets into that role, whatever role it is at that time. And, and so she was doing that with, okay, now come on, say thank you. Say thank you, you know, and some kids get it. Some kids are really, they don't care. They just want the Cheerios, thank you very much. They don't, they're not saying anything, they just want the Cheerios. So, you know, from my perspective, give them the Cheerios, oh, what I don't care. But no, Phyllis is gonna teach them. So she went through this with this little girl and she was really getting good at it. Say thank you, thank you. Say thank you, thank you. So then she kind of got to the next step. We didn't know she was going to that next step, the little girl. And she came up to Phyllis one time and she said, thank you, thank you. She got it. You know, like if I, if I, if I get something, I'll say, so why don't I just cut out the middleman and just go right to thank you, give me whatever it is. Sort of the way that we kind of are with God, aren't we, sometimes? Like, thank you, what do you got for me? Somehow it changes over the course of time, and God has a way of wanting us to understand that thanksgiving, giving thanks to God, and also trusting him, they're actually incredibly connected because they're incredibly uh, intimate, they're personal, they're relational. And so we, go, we come to a passage, you heard it on Wednesday night, Pastor uh, Gary spoke on it from 1 Thessalonians 5. See that none of you render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophecies, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. It's an amazing thing. Of all those lists that are there, quen- don't quench the spirit, not despising prophecy and everything else, the only one that has connected with it for this is the will of God is in everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. This is the will of God. Doesn't say anything about quenching not the spirit, despite all that's important, but it says for this is the will of God. Let's, let's look at that for a minute. The will of God, not just sort of an idea, But when I read the scriptures, no matter where it is, and I see this is the will of God, it's like, hey, I'm paying attention here. This this isn't God's suggestion. This isn't something that he would really appreciate if you could kind of lean in that direction. He's saying, my will is that in everything you will give thanks. And for most of us, we say uh, the good things, right, God? The good things, like when I pray for a car and somebody delivers one to my driveway, when I pray for good grades at school and I get an A even though I didn't study, you know, that, that must be the stuff. And he says, no. In everything, there's no little little asterisk, and at the bottom you have to read, except for this, except for this, except for this. It doesn't say that. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. God, the creator of heaven and earth, will is that you and I, as believers in Jesus Christ, are thankful for everything. Well, that's very sobering. Because quite honestly, there's a whole list of stuff in my life that I'm not particularly excited about. They, you know, you go through a day and you're like, I don't really want to be thankful about this at all. The person that cut you off on the road, the person, you know, the things that happen, you're just like, not really thinking about being thankful here. But then he goes on to say, in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, this is the whole package. It's in everything give thanks. This is God's will. But God says, hey, hey, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you are in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, if you are born again, if you have a spiritual rebirth, you can do this. You can't do it on your own. We've learned over the years, we've learned over this this last year that if if people are, if they're not born again, they're not going to be able to do and, and respond as Christians. If you want a spirit of reconciliation that God puts in us as believers, an unbeliever will not have that in them. And so as God works in our lives, he's saying this, you can give thanks in everything. It's my will, and I have provided your ability to do that because you're born again. You have been sanctified and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And then at the end, I love this part. He says, he could have just said, in everything give thanks, 
For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, period. But he does it. He says, concerning you, for you. Concerning you. So that means God has a special plan in my life. He has, I have to trust him that he's unfolding something in my life. Because all this, in everything give thanks, this is God's will. In Christ Jesus, for you. I'm getting something out of this. There's something about in everything give thanks that when I don't want to, that God says, you just do this, just do it, it's my will. In the transformed life that you have as a born again believer, you're a Holy Spirit, you're, there's a Holy Spirit in you, you're, you're, your whole life is completely different and you're gonna see something in your life that you would never have seen before. So it's, it's that way, it's his, it's his way to his purpose beyond our way. His way to it's his way to his purpose beyond our purpose i've got my purpose i got my plans i'm a planner i'm always planning something we were putting up the christmas decorations we didn't do them yet we did them now but at the time when i was sitting there on the couch and phil goes what are you doing i said i'm putting the christmas decorations up i'm sitting on the couch she said oh, oh you are i said yeah I'm mentally i've just put them all up they're all up all we have to do is go the, through the process of getting the boxes up from the basement. I haven't figured who's going to do that yet, but I figured out, I'm a, I, like, I like planning. But here he says, wait a minute. Your plans, as good as they may be, they're not my plans always. His purpose is beyond our way. Trust his way and give thanks. See, all of a sudden, when we start walking through the difficult places in our life, we come to that place of saying, wait a minute. He's saying, give thanks in everything. Okay, God, I'm going I'm to try this. Why does God want us to give thanks in everything? He wants us to give thanks because that is a relational connection with him. It's our way of connecting into his heart. It's our way of saying, God, thank you, because I could not do this or I could not have this unless you were there. You're the one that comes close into my heart of hearts. I have that intimate time with you. So there's times where I'm just able to say, thank you, God, thank you, just thank you. I don't even know what the full picture is, but I know this, that you are there and you are walking me through this place in our life. God wants to have that relationship of trust with us. Not only should we be trusting him, but the Bible tells us that he also trusts us from uh, in, in Matthew 5, we read the story of the men with the talents. You know, he gives the talents out. Some bury them, some bring them back. And the, the one man, man brings back five. The master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share in your master's happiness. You see, this is not just a linear thing that we just keep showing up with on the way and God says, okay, okay, okay. No, God has a plan. He's entrusting things to us. And, and even though we don't understand it, he's saying to us, if you start being thankful in every situation, you're going to make an investment in something that you have no idea because it's my will. And in Christ Jesus, your life is going to change just like that servant. Not only that, but God says, I want to do this for you. But God has a way that he's doing it. See, we want to kind of come to the end of the story and say, okay, I'll take whatever you got for me. And he says, oh, no, no. We gotta lay a foundation here. We have to an attitude, an attitude of thanksgiving that begins to unfold through every situation of our life. You know, uh, we, we wanna thank the Lord in the midst of the storms of our life. Now again, you know, we're not talking about thanking the Lord for the thing, but, but the reality is God is walking with us through the storms. Look at the, uh, in Matthew 8, uh, the, the disciples are out on the water. You, you are familiar with this. The disciples, they're on the ocean, they're on the, on the lake. Storm comes up, the boat's bouncing all over the place, and the disciples start looking for Jesus. And where is he? Sound asleep. Jesus was like, well, I don't well, I care. I'm, I know what's going on. They are panicked. They're running all over, screaming, yelling, their life is over, and so on. And he says, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Because the all-knowing God wasn't aware of that, so they had to wake him up and tell him, you know. And so he says, he replied, you have little faith. Are you so afraid? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. What happened in the storm? You know, for Jesus, he stopped the storm. 
But for the disciples, there was something in that storm that taught them a lot about themselves. Not just that they should have planned better, perhaps, but they learned that their faith was not enough. Their faith was not enough in Jesus. It wasn't. Now, I don't know how I would have rewritten the story, but the fact is, is Jesus' rebuke tells us their faith was not enough. So in the middle of the storm, they learned about their faith. They learned that they did not really know him at all. They didn't know Jesus at all. They say it in their own words, who is this? What kind of man is this? You mean you've been traveling with him, listening to him, teaching, eating with him, sleeping with him, and you have no idea who he is? Sometimes that's the way we are with God, isn't it? We live our lives and live our lives, but it's only when the storm comes that we wake up and realize what we do or do not know about our God. It's only in those difficult places that we keep hearing those words echoing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In this situation, God, yes. In this situation, God, yes. The disciples, when I mean, this, our storms sober us as to who God is. When we're walking through those storms, it's not like we're like, yay, another storm. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, yay, you're with me in the storm. You're with me in the storm. Thank you, God, that right now I've been told that I have cancer, but you're with me. Thank you, God, that the accountant just said there's no more money, but you're with me. Thank you, God, that my daughter just said that she's pregnant and I'm not sure what to do, but you're with us. Thank you, God, that in this situation you are with us, you are with us, you are with us. That's the will of God. So that when walking through the situation, it's not about being so, so kind of like uh, uh, empty-minded, just saying, hey, everything's great. No, no. There are real situations. There was a real storm, and the boat was really rocking, and the things were really coming apart, and the disciples were really upset. And, God, and, and Jesus rebuked him. He says, why are you so afraid? How many times have I been rebuked by God? Why are you so afraid? Why are you so anxious? Why are you so worried? And I have to ask myself, yeah, oh man of God, why are you? You know how many times I've worked myself into a frenzy only to find out 15 minutes later that it's all fixed? Sometimes Phyllis will look at me and she goes, okay, you know how this is going to end, right? As I'm like, oh, uh-huh. you know how this is going to end? I know, but I have to have a little anxiety every so often. It's good, you know, for my heart. You know how it's going to end. See, that's why I keep coming back to that passage. If he just said, you know, uh, and everything, give thanks. Okay. Now, this is the will of God because God has a purpose in our thanksgiving. And it's to open that relational trust with him that we can move to the next place in our lives. We thank the Lord for loving me enough to teach me in those difficult, challenging times. So yeah, I don't want to hear about uh, having cancer or having a financial problem or relational problems or anything else, but I know this, that in the midst of it, in the midst of it, I am going to get to know God in a way that I could never know him before, ever. I'm going to hear his voice like I never heard. I'm going to pray like I've never prayed before. I'm going to open the word and search out answers like I've never heard. Now, this is not God manipulating me. He's saying in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. And as soon as that starts happening, I've certainly walked out of emergency rooms with my own family and, and walking out saying, thank you, Lord, you're, I, I know you're in the midst of this. That's all I know. I don't know if someone's going to get healed. I don't know if the situation's going to get better. I know this. Thank you, Lord, you're in the midst of this. And there's something about that that connects me immediately to the fact that I'm trusting you, God. I'm trusting you. You're in the middle of this, and I trust that you have an answer here. You have an answer that is beyond anything I could ever imagine. You're going to stretch me in a way that I never thought I could be stretched. But you may say, you know, what if I don't want to be thankful? Why do I have to be thankful? You don't know my situation. You don't know how bad it is. And I, I probably don't. It's easy for you to say, Pastor. But you don't know how horrible my life is. But let's look at the fullness of Scripture, okay? Let's look at Paul's life. Paul was put in prison, flogged, received 40 lashes five times from the Jews, stoned, three times beaten with a, with a rod, and this is what he says in Ephesians 5. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's Paul's words. Those are Paul's words. And as he walked through this serious, this time in his life, and he walked through these difficult places like we do, what happens when God all of a sudden starts revealing a plan in our life that we had no idea was there? It starts by that simple step. Thank you, God. Thank you right now. When your child is sick, thank you, Lord. Thank you that in the midst of it, you're going to do something incredible, if, if only to know his comfort and strength, if only to know his presence and his peace, if only to stir in us a place of worship. How many places, how many times have we been in emergency rooms as a family, or I've visited other families, or been around the death of someone uh, in, in a nursing home or something, and, and there's worshiping, and there's singing, and there's the staff are like, who are these people? In everything, give thanks. And worship is thanks. Worship unto God is praise unto God. And we're in the midst of these places, and we have the opportunity now to begin to worship him and love him. For this is God's will. How do we know that God's will is not to be in that place at that time so that entire floor in that hospital will hear praises to God? That maybe those nurses in that staff, and I know many nurses and staff are, are here from the nursing homes and, and so on. And you've shared that so many times. How great it is to see genuine Christians coming into that place and praying and being concerned and, and, and being filled with faith in those places. Yeah, it's a difficult place sometimes. But he says in, in Ephesians 5, always giving thanks to God in, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please remember that this is not just behavior modification. You need to be more thankful. You say that to your kids all the time. You need to be more thankful. But this is be thankful in Christ Jesus. So what does that mean? It gives us an incredible access to God. It means that when we're born again, we have a spiritual rebirth. So now thankfulness is different than we are in the flesh. So it's different. It gives us an access to the heart of God that we never had before because we're born again. Because we're born again, not for any other reason. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So that when we come to those situations and we're thankful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a thankfulness that has a spiritual truth in it that can only be accessed by those who know the Lord. It can only be a place there that we can touch the heart of God. It's only there that we can begin to walk in trust in a place that our flesh says, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't walk through this again. I can't have this, this uh, challenge in my relationship with my spouse again. I can't do this with my prodigal children again. I can't do this with our finances again. I can't do this with my health again. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will. In Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Philippians 4. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. See, our problem is oftentimes we read the scriptures and we just have these little pieces because we don't really read it. We kind of just travel through it, you know, a little here. It's like shopping, you know, this aisle has got this, this aisle's got this. When I go shopping, it's like I don't want to go down any aisle that doesn't have exactly what I need. You know, when, uh, when Phyllis and I would used to go shopping together, we don't do that anymore. When we used to go shopping together, I said to Phyllis, well, what do you need? She goes, well, we'll just go down this aisle. What does that, what does that mean, just go down this aisle? <laughs> like something's going to jump out of the shelf and say, hey, don't forget me. I mean, I said, just give me, give me a half of the list. I'll, I'll get the stuff. I'll get the stuff. You know, I always get the, uh, the, the, you know, get the meat, the, the, the cold cuts. It's like number 47, number 40. You know, it's forever. That's how we read the Bible sometimes. I'll take one from here, one from here. So we come to this. I can do all things with Christ Jesus who strengthens me. We're not doing anything. We don't have any foundation. We have to go back. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. In everything give thanks. All of a sudden there's a trust that starts opening up. All of a sudden, when I come to this place and I can do everything through him who gives me strength, everything means the things that I'm trusting him to unfold in my life. So when I come to that place, instead of rebuking it, I realize, oh my goodness, this is from God. 
This door that I think is closed is not closed. It's an open door from the Lord. But in my flesh, it's closed. I can't do this. I can do everything through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I can be thankful. I can trust him that his plan is bigger than my plan. It's got more direction than my direction could ever understand. And it starts with an attitude of thanksgiving. I want to challenge you even throughout today. As you start going through this day and you come to those crossroads, just start with the first words, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When somebody cuts you off in the parking lot here, it could happen. And you just say, thank you, Lord. That's all. When the waiter is late with your lunch and it's cold, thank you, Lord. And you can still say, could you just heat this up? But you see, when you start in everything, give thanks. Now we've released the anointing of God's presence in you. So now all of a sudden, that waiter who brings the cold food is now someone that you can share the love of Christ with versus, oh, for goodness sake, just give me a hot hamburger, will you? Oh, no. In everything, give thanks. But this is the will of God because God's saying, trust me, this hamburger is nothing compared to what I want to do in that person's life. This situation when you're waiting in line is nothing compared to what I want to do if you just wait and believe what I have. It's so much bigger. It's so much more exciting to live our lives always ready for what God is going to do next rather than just kind of holding it all together, hoping I make it through the next day. So with all these things unfolding in our hearts and our lives, we don't have to feel thankful in order to give thanks it can be simply the outward expression of him, of him who dwells within, right? It's just, it's just every day, thank you, Lord. I'm thankful for my wife every day. Do we have moments where we disagree? Yeah. That doesn't mean like, well, not thankful for you anymore. <laughs> you know? But we're supposed to eat at 5 o'clock. It's 5.05. I'm not going to say thank you for this meal. It was late. The fact is, is when it's there, when there's a love relationship, when we have that relationship with God, it's just like, thank you, Lord. I don't understand what's going on, right? But thank you because you know what's going on. That's all that matters to me. As long as you know what's going on, I'm thankful. Because if it's left up to me, we will be everywhere but in the right place. And so at the very end, how do, we, how do we step into this new life from going from thanksgiving to trusting? No matter what's unfolding, give thanks. No matter what's unfolding, give thanks. Just like the little girl. Thank you. Thank you. I get this. I don't understand it fully, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a step. Thank you. And everything, give thanks. Give thanks. The second thing is always know the Lord is good. The Lord is good and he wants an intimate relationship with you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. And however he takes me through things, if the result of that all the time is, is uh, uh, God's will in my life his, uh, through Jesus Christ concerning me, I, I want that. I, concerning me, he wants a relationship with me. God wants a relationship with me every single day, an intimate relationship with me. His love is steadfast, and it lasts forever, even when we fail. Even when we fail. Don't be afraid to fail with God. Don't. A relationship with God allows us to take a step and go, I did it wrong. God, I wasn't thankful when I should have been thankful. I'm sorry. This is God's will. God, forgive me. I should have been more thankful in this situation. Why? I don't understand that this is new to me. I don't understand it. God said, I will show you how to walk through it. Through Christ Jesus, you have a renewed mind. You have a new spirit. You're able to hear and understand the things that I can speak into your life because we're born again believers in Jesus Christ. And he wants our lives to continue to unfold. And he's faithful to all generations. He has a vision. God has a vision for all of our lives. Well, this isn't a mystery it's an ongoing vision. It's not like he's going to package it up and present it to us in a box. God has a vision that my life will continue to unfold to reflect him. God has a vision that my life will continue to unfold to reflect him. That's why I trust him. I trust him that even though I think I've got all the pieces together, he knows I don't. And you know what? I know I don't. And so when I'm in the middle of some of the craziest things, I'll say, thank you, God, because somewhere in the midst of this, you're, gonna do, you're doing something in my life. You're teaching me something. 
You're showing me I'm selfish. You're showing me my lack of faith. You're showing me that I need to start looking at my life. You're showing me that. And I can be selfish just like anybody else. And God steps in, and he has a vision for our lives. But it starts by simply saying, by absolute faith sometimes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. It's your will through Christ concerning me. How incredible is that? As God's plan starts opening in our life. Our thanksgiving empowers us to trust him. And trust is the reality of knowing the person intimately, to be thankful in all situations. I wrote this down because I think this is something I could give to Pastor Zorlingo. It sounds like a, a Zorlingoism, you know. We go from existing in your safe zone to living in the power zone. Doesn't that sound like something Pastor Zarlinga would say? So I'm going to sell that to him so he can put it in his book, okay? (laughs) But we're going to go from our safe zone to the power zone. Isn't it great? Isn't it great when you're living your life and and you and someone trusts you? When you're in your business and the guy says, hey, you know what? You've been here for 27 years. Why don't you take care of that? We trust you. Wow, you're in there 24-7. When you're children and you say, okay, first time you give your car keys to your child. I trust you. I I really don't, but I trust God to be with you. (laughs) And you're 21 years old. You should be driving by now. You know, here. I trust you. We move to a new place from that safe place to trusting God. And now we're in the power zone. We're in a place that we can do and see things like we've never done and seen before. I'm going to ask Seth and the worship band to come out, and we want to just take these last moments, as we've been doing over these last few weeks, of just taking the time to come before the Lord, allow him to hear our hearts, as you just reflect on the word of truth. As God spoke it into your life, perhaps he's challenging you. Maybe you aren't a thankful person. You're not a thankful person at all. But I'll tell you this, you take one step saying, okay, God, just show me how to be thankful. Here's what will happen. You'll come to a situation, you'll say, this is a good situation to be thankful in. You'll come to something that you've done a hundred times and go, wow, thank you, Lord. See, it's, that's all it is. It's not thank you, Lord, in a whole sentence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because you acknowledge an intimate relationship with him, walking close to him, letting things unfold, and seeing what God has for you. Let's pray together. Father, we are very thankful. We believe that what you're unfolding in our lives is beyond even our own comprehension. And so we want to be obedient to your will. Your will. To see your work be done in our lives. To see our lives transform, that we will go to that place of our own little safety zone into a place where your power flows through us as your vision for us is realized. And and we trust you that your plan is so much greater than our plan. And whatever that takes to get us there, Lord, we're thankful for that. As we worship you, Lord, would you impart to us your truths and your promises. In the name of Jesus, let's stand together. We want to give you opportunity at the end of these services as we're doing now just to reflect on the word of truth that's been imparted into you, truly believing that as your heart is open, as you're thankful, God will impart that relationship, that trust with him, a vision for your life, an understanding of God's promises as they're unfolding. We have altar workers here that they're just men and women like yourselves that have been born again, that God has allowed them to have this wonderful ministry of interceding for you as you go through. Maybe one of those challenges, maybe you're stuck. I don't know how to be thankful. Not really sure what the next step is. Maybe you have someone you just want to pray for. So I'm going to ask those that are our prayer team, if you would please come down to the front here. And as we sing, always know that these times to pray are always available for you always because we believe as a church family we are just that a family sometimes you have to help each other right that's why we have to just pray hey i need some prayer that we can continue to be thankful in everything for this is god's will 
in our life. We're gonna sing this one more time, and of course, the front here is always open, but let this last time that we sing it, let the Holy Spirit just impart it into you, and then I'll close with a benediction. Lord, we have come into your house today thankful, so thankful that you've made a way for us through your son, Jesus. That you have a plan, Lord, that we might reflect you wherever we go, whatever we're doing. And so I pray that you'll pour out your spirit over us here in this place. That, Lord, wherever we go, the fragrance of Christ will be evident. When we're in the difficult times and we're in the times of great joy, we will be thankful to you because this is your will, Lord. And we desire to fulfill that in every area of our lives. We pray the blessing of the Lord over this body. May we go forth rejoicing in you, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.